We all crave the NFL content, and we are in debt to Bill Barnwell for providing it. ESPN.com today, your top playmaking groups revealed. It's an annual thing, and the presumption, just for those that aren't familiar, you, you presume average coaching, average quarterbacking, average O-line play. We understand that that's not the case, but, but that's what we are using for the exercise. And with that in mind, you've identified the San Francisco 49ers as having the top playmaking group. Obviously, their quarterback is not their strength, but you believe across the board they've got the best group. Why? Scott, because they are so good with the ball in their hands after the catch. And we saw this. This isn't some hypothetical thing. We saw this last year during the second half of the season when Brock Purdy right. was their starting quarterback. It was Christian McCaffrey making linebackers miss. It was George Kittle running people over into the end zone for a hot second half. It's Debo Samuel running away from defenders in the postseason. They have so many pieces that individually, one-on-one, -on -one, or taking advantage of mismatches can absolutely pick apart opposing defenses. Kyle Shanahan helps. Yep. Brock Purdy is a little better than I think we gave him credit for. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you put the Niners with Patrick Mahomes, you put yeah. the Niners <laughs> with Joe Burrow, right. I think if you put the Niners with anybody else, they would look more impressive than any other playmaking group in football. Frightening to consider that Debo thought his year last year was garbage. Yeah. So he, he's, he's entering into this year wanting to prove a, a point after what happened last year. You mentioned Joe Burrow. Um, you believe that the group he's got is the second best group. I'm looking at Chase Higgins and Boyd, and I'm asking you, uh, is that the best wide receiver group in the National Football League? Ooh. It's pretty close, isn't That's it? That's a tough one. I mean, maybe you give credit to the Eagles with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, maybe the Dolphins with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. You're but saying two people there. I'm saying three people here. That third person does seem like it makes that tiny little bit of a difference, right? Yep. I mean, Tyler Boyd's such a fundamentally smart player, um, effective player in the slot, but at the end of the day, like the guys who are going to make hay in Cincinnati are Chase and Higgins, where you have two guys who legitimately would be number one receivers on 19, 20 NFL teams. Mm -hmm. Very, very rare opportunity for that to be the case for any team. And for the Bengals to have that, such a huge advantage for Joe Burrow these last couple of seasons. You mentioned earlier if Mahomes played with the group in uh, San Francisco. He doesn't. He plays with the group with the, in Kansas City, and they still won a Super Bowl. Oh, it's yeah? interesting. You've got the Chiefs and the Bills 19 and 20, and those are teams whose paths have collided quite a bit. I understand them being linked to, to, to a degree. And I guess it illustrates just how good Mahomes and Allen are, which is more concerning to you in terms of what these teams don't have at the playmaking Ooh. positions. I would lean towards the Bills because we kind of saw this moment a couple weeks ago, right, when Stephon Diggs left camp. And I think we all kind of had that thought of, what would that offense look like if Stephon Diggs was not available? Gabe Davis a nice option at number two, but if he's your one, I mean, it's I, I like obviously. I like Gabe Davis. That's a real stretch to have him as your number one. Dalton Kincaid is an exciting prospect. We know rookie tight ends not necessarily all that effective. Usually takes them a year or two mm -hmm. to kind of develop the rhythm of being playing at the NFL level. So the Chiefs, they can run the ball with Isaiah Pacheco. They have a lot of exciting options at wide receiver, not necessarily proven options. Like mm -hmm. maybe Kadarius Tony breaks out this year. Maybe it's Sky more but there's not really that you know sort of guy you can sort of lead on to besides Travis Kelsey who is the most incredible tight end in football obviously I think Tony's a guy I, I already know my fantasy Josh <laughs> I shouldn't say it on the show because that's the guy I'm gonna be trying to take in every league I'm in this might shock people you have the Atlanta Falcons in the top 10 and speaking of the top 10 last three years they've gone with a skill position player in the first round three years in a row Pitts London and this year Bijan Robinson. Now, is there an arrow pointing up? In other words, do you feel like Atlanta, if they get a little bit better than average quarterback play, like might they really surprise people? Absolutely. They invested a lot in the defense this offseason and free agency, mm -hmm. and you have those homegrown playmakers. First team in NFL history to have three homegrown top 10 picks playing together at the same time. I mean, I don't, I don't need to sell you on B. John Robinson as a prospect. Right. He's incredible coming into the league, but the question is, like you said, can Desmond Ritter get them to be a team where they're functional? as a passing attack. Can Kyle Pitts fantasy owners just be a little upset as opposed to furious every single week? That's the bar they have to hit. And, and a real quick bonus, for people that took Pitts and got burned, I, you see Robinson picked in like top 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think people that picked Pitts and, and, and got scarred by it are going to have a hard time pulling the trigger on Bijan for the same reason? No, Bijan's going to get the ball a ton because they want to yeah. run the ball at the end of the day. You're going to move him around. That, like, that coaching canard, I think it's actually going to happen with Bijan Robinson. He's going to be a very versatile player for them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.